Hello, and welcome to a new episode of NSPE's Committee Corner. I'm your host, Margaret Edwards, and today we are going to be looking at the nominations process through a recent nomination or confirmation hearing that occurred in the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation. So to begin, uh, let's take a look at Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution of the United States. Um, you might be thinking at first, you know, if we're talking about, you know, Congress and the legislative branch, why are we talking about Article 2 of the Constitution, which deals with the executive branch of the presidency? And the reason is, um, if you are wondering that, is because this section of Article 2 is what gives Congress, um, particularly the Senate, to advise and consent um, the president or the executive on various nominations. Um, so this section reads, um, he shall have power by and with the advice and consent of the Senate to make treaties provided two thirds of the senators present con concur. Uh, we don't really you know, care about treaties, but that's how, at least today, um, and you know, in the context of this episode, um, but that's how the section starts. Uh, it continues, and he shall nominate and by and with the advice and consent of the Senate shall appoint ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, judges of the Supreme Court, and all other officers of the United States, whose appointments are not herein otherwise provided for, and which shall be established by law. Um, the section continues, um, but that's really what matters to, to the context of today's uh, committee corner. Um, you know, in this section, it establishes um, a check of the legislative branch on the executive branch's power. Um, if if you remember back to, to civics, whenever you talk about, you know, checks and balances that are, are written into the Constitution, um, this is just an example of, of one of those. Um, so continuing on to talking about this nomination hearing. Um, this happened on June 24th, and um, this is just one step in the nominations process. Um, the first step, obviously, is the president puts forth nominations. Uh, the next is the nominations are taken up by the appropriate Senate committee. Um, usually it deals with which Senate committee has jurisdiction over if it's the department or agency that the appointment is to. Um, so today's hearing was a lot of, um, you know, Department of Transportation or transportation related appointments. So um, it falls under the jurisdiction of the Senate Commerce Committee. And, you know, the process continues on to the nomination being voted on by the full committee and then voted on um, and ultimately either approved or disapproved or denied. Um, by the full Senate, and that needs to be done by a simple majority vote, so 50 plus one. Um, so the nominees that appeared before the committee um, were Carol Petsonk. She is the nominee to be Assistant Secretary for Aviation and International Affairs for the Department of Transportation. Uh, the Honorable Jennifer L. Hammondy, who is currently um, a member of the National Transportation Safety Board, and she is President Biden's nominee to become chair of the National Transportation Safety Board. Um, the you know current and most recent chair, um, Robert Sumwalt, he retired um, at the end of June, so so they need to fill that position. Um, it, the next nominee that was there was uh, Karen Headland. Uh, she is the nominee to be a member of the Surface Transportation Board. And then also um, Dr. Robert Hampshire, who is the nominee to be Assistant Secretary for Research and Technology at the Department of Transportation. Um, so this hearing, you know, plays out like any normal hearing, um, beginning with opening remarks by the chair and ranking member, um, and then followed by um, opening testimony from all of the panelists, and in this case, the nominees. Um, it then, you know, goes on to the question and answer period of the hearing, um, with each member getting five minutes. Um, what's special, and I think really, you know, more or less unique to um, nomination hearings in the Senate is there's usually an additional round of questions. Um, you know, what happened at this hearing, all four appeared before the committee at the same time. So I, if I were a Senator on the Commerce Committee, I would have only had five minutes to ask questions of four individuals. Um, that's not a lot of time, especially for, um, 
you know, positions that are so important, particularly as it relates to safety. And um, so, so I then could, you know, if I stuck around to the end of the hearing or, you know, popped back in once the whole first round of questions were over, I could get another turn and continue continue asking questions with another additional five minutes. Um, so I, I could get a little bit more time to ask some more questions of the nominees. Um, and you know, the, the way that senators do approach this time is much like a job interview. Um, they get to ask about the experience of the nominees, um, you know, what they bring to the table, um, something that they've done in the past, good or bad, um, and kind of how that will affect um, their, their performance in, in the role that they're being nominated for. Um, so, so there's a few reasons why we pay attention to, to nomination hearings. Um, and there's, there's really two main reasons. Uh, the first is nominees, um, should they be confirmed by the Senate in the end, could affect NSPE or the work of professional engineers. Um, for example, uh, the National Transportation Safety Board um, has made recommendations in the past to governors regarding ending the licensing exemption on natural gas pipelines. Um, this was following the 2018 um, pipeline incident in Merrimack Valley, Massachusetts. And you know, following that, you know, when their investigation discovered that a PE had not signed off on design plans. So then that was part of their recommendation, um, excuse me, in their final report. And so that also in our work that we did, especially on a legislative and advocacy front, gave us another you know, leg to stand on whenever we were talking with legislators, their offices um, and engaging you, our members on the issue, whenever we were talking about the Lionel Rundown Pipeline Safety Act. We could go in and say, yes, this is important. And you know, another reason why it is so important is the National Transportation Safety Board has made the recommendation to end the licensing exemption. Um, so yes, it affects you know, the work of professional engineers, but can also kind of affect what we do here at NSPE and, and giving us you know, a little bit extra leverage behind some of our legislative asks or you know, the other way, but an example is giving us some leverage behind asks. Um, and the second reason is we can identify the policy priorities of certain senators um, through the questions that they ask through issues that, um, they choose to focus on in their questions, you know, which can assist us, you know, NSPE as staff members in the advocacy work that we do around certain issues and also help us identify champions for those issues. Um, for example, um, Chair Cantwell in her, in her first round of questioning, you know, asked a question about safety and particularly um, regarding the automation and ask all four nominees to you know, propose one or two changes that they saw fit or that they think need to happen in order to, to have a safe um, transportation environment. And you know, or Honorable Jennifer L. Hammondy was the first to answer this question. And she proposed that you know, design systems uh, that, that systems need to be designed in a way um, to prevent human error, um, as well as safety standards. So that, you know, one um, can even present us with an ally, at the an ally at the National Transportation Safety Board, particularly as chair, um, but also shows us that that secretary or Senator Cantwell, excuse me, Senator Cantwell is interested in safety and that's a priority of hers. So that's somebody we can go and talk to and, and educate her about the you know roles that professional engineers play particularly in in you know holding paramount the public's health safety and welfare and decisions that that professional engineers make um, and so you know certainly watching this see how the nominee how these nominees and their nominations play out um, through the through the rest of the process is something that we're certainly going to be watching and paying attention to. Um, so with that, that concludes this week's episode of the Committee Corner. So please be sure to tune in next time. Um, and you can find the Committee Corner in the NSPE Advocacy Center or on the NSPE YouTube page. Thank you.